Hi everyone, this is Carrick from the Centaur for Disease Control, and today I bring you the review for Lovely Planet, a game for the PC and Xbox One. Today I'll be reviewing the Xbox One version that will be available January 8th. Lovely Planet tells the intense tale of, well, Actually, who am I kidding? There isn't a story. You basically play a game based in a world where hippies high on DMT crashed into a gun store and somehow blew the world up and filled it with pissed off cereal boxes bent on your destruction. From that point on, you sprint through levels as a stretched out little yellow arm holding a daisy gun where occasional red blobs kill you while you're performing Russian circus level acrobatic feats to beat each level. Sounds like fun. Let's see if this bullet dance pays off in anything other than absolute frustration. As always, if you like the video, maybe subscribe. So here's the review for Lovely Planet. Xbox controller sensitivity training, schizophrenic level design, cereal box enemies, and giant throbbing red balls. Graphics are up first. Some call it simple, others call it utilitarian, I call it bland. Throwing colors into basic shapes doesn't instantly make it art, and honestly, I don't like the look of the game at all, especially the mixture of pastels with harder color schemes. It just does not look pleasing to the eye. Its modeling is also basic to the point of causing collision detection issues across the board. It doesn't engage the imagination much at all, and in the end, doesn't feel as artistic as it really does amateurish. I think others will see it as a childish example of a fantasy world, and I admit it's possible that the art and overall look and style just escaped me. It's possible, but if true, I find that odd since many games that do look somewhat like this I've actually liked the look of. However, they felt like a more cohesive package. So I would say graphics, not very good. Sound, music, and voice. And of course, sound is up first in this trilogy of audio awesome. I, well, I guess it's okay. It's a fairly basic game, and the sounds back that up with a almost dearth of any environmental audio, resulting in a really bland feel to the title. Those occasional sounds you do hear, like your gun or the alert of timed red death balls hitting the ground, and I never thought I'd say that sentence out loud, uh, they're as basic as basic could be. In the end, nothing here lit my imagination or made me feel interested in the game world. Music. So this one's odd. I can see where they were going, but the heavily saccharine-influenced music many times feels very disconnected from the title, both in pacing and in tone. You're left many times with music that sounds like it exists on a higher plane than the game itself, a plane where someone's playing Revenge of Shinobi or some other action game. All the while, you're running across a grassy field shooting a cereal box with an angry face painted on it. The music was okay, but it did not seem to fit at all. Voice. Nope. Moving on. Gameplay. So the basic premise is you run through levels as quick as you can and you have to kill every enemy and get to the end and hit a beam of light that tries to mimic the flagpoles in Mario games. The game times you and then you either move on or you try again. It's considered a hard game, but I didn't actually feel that it was unduly hard, at least on purpose. While sprinting willy nilly through basic shapes land, some enemies shoot you, others just stand there with a menacing look on their face. And then after a bit, new hazards are introduced like jump bumpers and red death balls. Basically, these shoot up into the air and for some reason, if they hit the ground, you die. It's like a really odd slow motion hot potato in a world drawn by someone with the cheapest crayon set you can get at Walmart. Now, the plan is that once you die, anywhere between 30 and 3,000 times, you get through a level, and then if you want, you can go back through that level and try to do it faster or try a slightly different route. And there are a couple on each level. Imagine those old style Quake or Doom platforming levels and time speed runs. Except, as a fan of those, the inherent chaos in this title and problems here removed any gameplay loop from this title. I never, ever wanted to see these levels again. Not only because they didn't look that interesting, but they didn't play interesting at all. First off, movement feels like you're on one of those new flame-attracting hoverboards that are apparently breeding just to kill TV show personalities and break Mike Tyson's hip. It's swishy as hell, and add that to the terrible collision detection in many locations, and a lot of just bad bounding boxes, and you have a frustrating movement system with very little flexible finesse that you can show off. Additionally, I wrestled with the Xbox One controller for a good deal of time as the sensitivity just never felt close to right. I could yell out commands to a drunk on an ice rink and have better control than this game allows. 
Also, you might die 10 to 15 times, not because you messed up, but because that's the plan. The game will launch death balls into the air behind a rock and you have to die and then get back to that spot and keep looking or listening to find where it is. Additionally, most of the enemies have ESP and uh, you might go around a corner and an enemy's already shooting exactly where that corner will be. So you go around it and you're dead instantly, many times without seeing the enemy in any way, shape or form. Rinse and repeat rinse and repeat. It feels like it's trying to mimic that amazing synchronicity you get in first person shooters when you're moving and shooting and everything just works like your best moments of Halo or Call of Duty or Borderlands. But that never happens here because even if you do really well on a level, the difference is that this game requires you to die to learn while those other games levels allowed for an actual excellence in gameplay and awareness to spawn that synchronicity even many times on the very first experience with a level. It's because those were a true organic demonstration of gameplay, while this one is at its basic the most artificial you could possibly get. Now, running and hitting a jump bumper, twisting in the air, shooting a giant red ball, turning back around, shooting a red blob that covered a safe spot for me to land, and then landing and leaping instantly to the right because an enemy was already shooting at that spot felt about as fun as that sentence was to understand. Many people will like that kind of thing, but it is absolutely not gameplay to me. It is rote memorization for memorization's sake. To me, it was the most basic Simon Says style of gameplay I had played in a long, long time. Fun factor. Yeah, no. I get what they were groping for, and I see that many people actually like this title, but to me, and again, this is just me, it feels incredibly clumsy. It isn't backed up by any enjoyable game design or even level design, and has frustratingly poor collision detection on many of its enemies. I like death simulators, and I love hard games. Those are where I cut my teeth. This one wholly missed the point of why those are enjoyable. So I rate games on a buy, wait for a sale, rent, or never touch it again rating scale. You know, since this game goes for a super cheap price, I would actually say that it's a rental or a wait for a deep, deep sale, whichever of those two ways you can get it. There is nothing I can promise about this title other than that it isn't super expensive, but I don't feel its chaotic gameplay and extremely narrow focus will apply to anyone but the most ardent of death fetishists among us. And in the end, it's just not that fun. It is rote death for death's sake. So anyway, that's it for me. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, hit thumbs up. If you didn't, hit thumbs down. And as always, peace out.